Well, this is another one of the pieces of the puzzle on managing fruit color and relates to the light aspects of fruit red color and how to improve color using reflective fabrics. New York with 60% direct, 40% diffused. One of the questions I've had over the years is, what do we want in New York? Do we want a luminized reflective film, basically like a mirror, or do we want fabrics that is a little bit wavy and has different surface level to it? And I've argued without data for years that the luminized will essentially reflect straight back up most of the light. And so it might be really critical where you place that, whether it's underneath a tree or be in between the rows. Whereas woven fabric, because the reflected light, the diffuse light and direct light hits at different angles, it's reflected in a lot of different directions. And so we've questioned whether there's one is better than the other. And so we did some work this year where we tried to compare that. And that's what Luis is going to talk to you about. And the conclusions of this study, all the studies show it, there are important differences between reflect grown covers with higher percentage of the reflection from extended, followed by myla in the side strip and extended and 80%. And finally, myla between the rows. Additionally, our study suggests that the light reflection and interception was different between training systems and all reflective ground covers in case of red blue area. The color result is with rusty, with honey crisp, with and without mylar. He was able to improve the efficiency of his picking. Minesca uh, on B9, small tree, all fruit pick in the first pick. We have the, the metallic film, we have the white reflective fabric. How do you manage the intense label need of the system? We do it two different ways. Now we have a trailer that we'll put the roll on, run some PVC down the roll, pull it out with a UTV, and then have the guys secure it and stuff once it's there. And then they move on to the next row, trying to stay ahead of them. The other way we do it is similar to what you saw with the Lamont machine with Mylar and just have the roll mounted on the back of the tractor and just have it roll out that way and have guys going around behind it. It's a little bit more labor intensive. You got some guys securing it to the trees and putting the bungees out there and ropes on the end. And that's really your biggest time constraint, having that go through. Mylar, which is, I think, simpler to manage. We found the simplest way to put it down is the guys slide a rope right through the roll and they just walk down a row and two guys go behind them and throw a shovel on them. All right, four guys can do three quarters of an acre in an hour, three man hours per acre. For the Mylar, we're using two people, one to drive the tractor and then we have a frame mounted machine, very similar to the picture of Lamont's there. And then there's a second guy on the back putting the dirt on the edges in Two of them, they're doing about a half acre per hour. So I figure in a nine to 10 hour day, they're covering about five acres of ground. With the extend day, I would say we'd be just a little bit slower because we zip it out with a RTV, but then the most time consuming is coming back through and hooking the claws into the fabric and making sure the bungees are adjusted right and the ends are properly secured. That we're doing with a four man crew and that we can do about four to five acres a day. How do you move the fabric from variety to variety? What we did at DeMarie is we built two trailers. We could have a trailer putting it out while at the same time the trailer was picking it up. That just made it faster. I like to leave the bungees and the hooks out in the orchard once you know which blocks you're going to deploy it in. And that speeds up the deployment. How do you spray when the fabric is down? I had uh, pretty good uh, luck with the Mylar blasting, you know, as, as we sprayed across it, you know, a lot of times we're making two applications, you know, maybe a cover spray, especially this year, we had so much rain and maybe a harvest of spray or something like that too, on top of it and uh, held up pretty good. The only place we ran into problems was on uh, Pink Ladies. We, we did a bunch of Maslins with it and it was so wet this fall. I mean, they just beat that stuff into the ground and it still worked, but the, the problem was picking it back up. But I'm, I'm not scared to drive over that Mylar. We just kick it over to the side and we're going through for a sprayer and just secure with the bungees and stuff. And it's it's fine in this instance. Coming from Creek Whipple, there was a big crop, so we had to wait a little longer for the color. Now there's the, the picker on the tarp and we'll kick it off to the side, the next row over for the tractor and beans to, to work. What kind of special equipment? Have you built something? So for the extend day, we built our wrapper, mounted it on like a bobcat. Uh, quick tach plate and it goes right on a Kubota loader tractor about 100 horse is enough to like pick up the weight and that way we can just drive from each row but one thing I really like about that is once you wrap the roll up you can take that loader and stack it right on a wagon or whatever to carry it back to the barns 
And then the mylar, what we're doing to, I guess, a cool thing picking it up is we're taking a crop care uh, plastic wrapper and veggies, and that's how we're picking it up pretty quick. And that seems to be working really good for us. We use some information that Mark provided in 2019. So all that analysis are the costs. We have an infographics that he produced in 2019. I was able to put some of my experience to Mark's numbers from 2018. We figured it was $150 an acre in labor that was accurate for deployment or picking it up. But that's very much variable cost. I think now it's about $300 an acre because you got to double it. The cost of the fabric, the cost of the materials you use, put it down like the bungees, the hooks, the spooler trailer, those are all fixed costs. So the more you can utilize them, the lower your per acre cost will get. What I do in, in real time is just try to do break-even analysis uh, using rough numbers to decide if it's worth it to do it. You need essentially two to three bins to cover your cost in deploying and picking it up. You should plan on using your fabric um, three times per season in order to get the highest value to maximize both your investment and your profits. Potential return should be $12 a bushel or greater um, in order to justify the investment and the expense. The economic example is for row spacings 12 to 14 feet. When you order your material, you need to figure out what's your average row width. And you can either do it from herbicide strip to herbicide strip or from trunk to trunk. Supposedly, if you do it from trunk to trunk, you do get um, better coloring. You also need to calculate the acreage that you plan to use a reflective fabric on in advance of ordering it. If you order enough fabric to cover 10 acres in one use and plan to use the fabric three times, you need to order enough bungee cord and claws for 30 acres. We install the bungee cord with a claw on each trellis pole and leave them in the orchard year round. Reflective fabric for us allows us to pick apples two to five days ahead of when other people are picking those apples and we have less stem and cracking, better pressure and condition um, for storage because we don't have to wait for color. For us, it's been very successful. Um, the longer you use it, the more hints you pick up in being more efficient. And we have been able to lower our labor costs each year, even though the H2A rate is increasing each year. Why mylar can be so lower values of light reflected? Because this is the problem. Okay, when there are raining days, you can see this is after raining days, the light reflection is, is lower. When there are periods of wind, the, the plastic is broke. And this is the wells of the tractor, maybe before harvest is necessary, doing uh, applications. And this is the wells of the tractor and the plastic more times is broke. And this way, in all these cases, it's necessary replacement the plastic for in case the light reflector and the color. The extendate doesn't throw back in the heat necessarily. It only throws back certain parts of the light spectrum. So you're not actually sunburning. We've seen some burning with a few honey crisp. The mylar is more like a mirror with that light. The extende kind of diffuses that light. I try to focus all of our extende material in our honey crisp. And then we use the mylar for smaller honey crisp trees and then other varieties, especially Fuji's ever crisp and stuff like that. I haven't had any problems with the mylar in, in hot weather yet. I think it worked great past year with poor coloring. We didn't do many honey crisps because they were just so poor, but all the other varieties worked great on. Huh? 